in advance. So anyway, Adam, looking at uh, looking at uh, your prediction uh, for a Biden victory, and this prediction was made on July the eighth of oh, this no, year. You got to go way back. You can't just you can't just kind of pick that tweet because I've been tweeting about these things consistently. I use Twitter as a timestamp, right? And I use it because you know most people you know will say something. You know most people are very reactionary on Twitter, and you know they'll uh, they'll tweet both sides of something, and then you know they'll say I was right that time, and forget about the time I was wrong because I could just delete that tweet, or you know I was in a wrong state or something. And uh, mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm a very uh, consistent person, and I've just been going along with what I've seen since you know 2015, 2016. I mean. I'm just continuing that that I'm just continuing that trend and kind of observing it and uh, just watching as it gets further away from reality and you get the trend and you get the misconception and it it's a bubble, right? So uh, I think of things in terms of financials and in terms of stocks and in terms of the markets, which is kind of my uh, alma mater, I suppose. So I, I kind of transfer everything to a uh, to financials and I think of this, uh, as a kind of a run up in Tesla stock, I expected Tesla to go up and, you know, I, uh, yeah. bubbles are bubbles, right? And, you know, you can't, uh, you can't fight the bubble sometimes. No, you can't. Uh, although I will say perhaps some bubbles pop sooner than others and uh, others are less predictable, but you know, uh, it bubbles the nature of them. I have no disagreement with what you just brought up. Uh, now as to the, what you think will happen in the event that Biden does win, uh, I found this very interesting. Uh, well, actually, I found all of it very interesting. But you are predicting a huge Biden electoral win. Uh, yeah, you yeah. say that he he and mega corporations uh, say, will say that he has a clear mandate after this win. I yeah, guess cool. explain this a little bit, Adam, and then Paul will share his two cents. Okay, well, so I, I, I think it's unfair to start there because, again, you're uh, kind of uh, putting a stake in a stream and, you know, uh, and uh, saying it starts there. And I'd like to... Uh, I'd like to, you know, choose a spot much earlier in this path and, and, and begin, you know, the stream there. So, you know, 2000, you know, 16, it really wasn't a surprise to me that, that Trump won. Um, it was, uh, there were, there were a lot of indicators and the indicators were there from 2014 and, you know, everything was there. So uh, it wasn't much of a surprise, but it also uh, was part of the expectation that he was going to win and that he wasn't going to win 2020 because he could win in 2016 as the insurgent. Right? because they were not prepared for the insurgent they didn't have um they didn't have all the apparatus of state uh aligned mm-hmm. against them except in a very ad hoc way right it was done kind of they a mixed match they assembled a little bit of google a little bit of that and at the same time they're also relying on a lot of flawed algorithms that uh had been built um um with the very wrong profiles uh it's how you train these you know, these algorithms and AIs. And uh, it was, you know, with four more, they had four years to to improve those. So uh, it's, uh, why why wouldn't they be doing that? And they've done such a good job along, along the periphery of, uh, you know, guarding the periphery from uh, what's outside of it that I don't see, uh, I don't see any opportunity for, uh, for, for Trump to win. So now I wonder what happens when uh, when when Biden wins, what's it look like? And uh, it's not only that, but they've also taken out um, the recourse for people who might object to it, right? And they've taken.